Hi, my name is Anumim. I'm a program manager at Microsoft, and today I would like to share with you how Microsoft does InnerSource. Microsoft is obviously a very large place. We have about 166,000 employees worldwide, of which 58% work in engineering roles. We have about 80,000 repositories with production relevant code, and 1.5 million PRs go into those repos every single quarter. Operating at such scale obviously means that we need to take a very structured approach to InnoSource. So how do we do it? Microsoft has an open source programs office that also takes care of the InnoSource topic. Let's talk about InnoSource policies. As InnoSource does not add compliance complexities, we can focus on scope and scale of our InnoSource engagements as well as motivation measures. At Microsoft, we are all in. That means we do not create curated projects, but rather open all code within the company for inner source collaboration. Further on, we allow very broad read access across all repos within Microsoft to enable broad collaboration across business boundaries. The last thing you also need to think about in policies is how do you create incentives or what incentives do you need? At Microsoft, every employee is incentivized to collaborate as it is part of our HR review process. Let's talk about marketing and education. I would strongly advise you to look for key stakeholders in respect to inner source, in respect to policies. You wanna connect with key stakeholders that drive policies today in order to weave in the requirements that InnoSource has as well. This way you avoid to create additional policies that are potentially contradictory to others. Secondly, you want to engage with key stakeholders that are practicing InnoSource today in your company. Those pockets of activity are a rich ground to harvest information from and learn from. Use that information to inform your guidance. Use that information to highlight particular teams that do inner source holistically and very well and create case studies. Those case studies enable others to identify themselves with inner source and the possibilities for their own project. Last but not least, think about practical ways to engage in respect to inner source to get the momentum started. Two things come to mind. Number one, meetups. In meetups, people can share their experience in respect to InnoSource. And at Microsoft, we have a regular open source meetup already. And so we invite InnoSource speakers to that meetup as well. Second, hack events. And Microsoft has obviously a very large hackathon every single year. In addition to that, however, we organize inner source hack events in which we introduce very specific teams and topics, and the team is available to people to ask directly and get in contact directly at the event. This creates a very close and intimate atmosphere between the contributor and the maintaining team and gets many people started on their inner source journey. Last not least, let's talk about tooling. Does tooling matter? And the answer to this is yes and no. Yes, it does matter because tooling needs to provide a means to enable collaboration. However, if the tooling allows collaboration, then the tooling really steps back and the cultural aspect is much more dominant. Let's look at version control as one example. Microsoft uses GitHub as well as Azure DevOps, and both are suit, well suited for supporting inner source collaboration. Let's talk about search and discovery. Search and discovery is the number one thing you want to enable for inner source. You want to enable people to first search before they code. And thus, at Microsoft, we had to create a separate tool that can deal with the scale in, uh, of Microsoft with 80,000 repositories and make it possible that you quickly can search across them for specific projects and repositories. Build and test. 
with build and test, you need to make sure that there is a way that people with complex build environments can abstract them, for example, into a virtual machine, into a containerized environment. So it's easy to replicate. So a collaborator, as they develop their code, can easily build and test within that sandboxed environment. And last but not least, data. Data is very important. At Microsoft, we make decisions based on data, and you want to enable every single team to make decisions on their journey in respect to InnoSource based on data, not based on feelings. So make sure you provide a rich data set in respect to InnoSource, and I'm more than happy to talk about that in more detail later. From a project perspective, the first thing you need to think about is planning for inner source. Inner source is an additional effort and you need to take that into account. And as it is an additional effort, make sure you understand why your project wants to pursue inner source. Not every project lends itself as a good candidate for inner source, just like not every project lends itself to be a good candidate for open source. So make sure you understand why you want to do inner source what your expectations are in respect to inner source and what you're willing to pay in order to meet those expectations three things coming to mind here number one is mentoring mentoring is an effort that's very often overlooked but it's incredibly important every single time you have a external collaborator to your project you need to enable them to learn about your project and to understand the culture of your team. That is done in two ways. Now, one, you have documentation. Make sure you have documentation because you also need that for every new team member to your team. And number two, you need to have resources available so collaborators can actually ask questions in order to get involved in your project. Mentoring is not a distraction. It's actually a net gain for your project as you train people on your technology and for your own team as it broadens the mindset of your team as well. When you think about engagements, think about also how those engagements happen. You will have long and short term engagements and you need to understand the cost of and benefit of each of them. And last but not least, make it a central point to your project to enable the success of others. We have been seeing that at Microsoft that projects that are very successful in respect to inner source, they make an emphasis to enable the success of their collaborators in parallel to their own success. Talking about successful engagement models. Number one issue for successful engagement is that you have proper documentation that starts with a proper readme and collaboration file but also makes clear how you expect that collaboration works. So make sure either in your README or in a contributing file, you outline the process, how you want to work with others. Setting clear expectations avoids misunderstandings and frustration. Make sure you communicate very open and honest from the very beginning. Open communication again makes clear to the collaborator what your goals are makes clear to you what the goals of the collaborator are and you can find a common ground or quickly part ways as if you don't have alignment make sure you also talk about maintenance many people only talk about the creation of code the design and then the handover however in your project, it will be critically important to understand who will maintain code. You can think about sharing the responsibility of maintaining the code. And what that means is actually, if that code, for example, backs a service, uh, you have the maintaining team and the collaborator in the same service queue. When an issue arises, both teams are responsible for making sure that the issue is addressed. If you have larger, more complex services, likely you need to understand the product end to end. And thus, 
we recommend for larger projects to rather have one responsibility, and that is typically the maintaining team. So when a collaborator is done with the collaboration and the, the code has migrated into the main branch, the collaborator sticks around, following, for example, the 30-day warranty pattern, and then the maintaining team takes over, and from then on forward, the maintaining team is responsible for maintaining the code. This kind of clarity is very, very important because the last thing you want is in a critical situation, no clarity who's responsible for it. The last point in respect to projects is how do you keep it going? Number one is make sure you measure your success in respect to inner source. We talked about the inner source uh, team providing rich data about the engagements, about uh, how PRs are going and so on and so forth. Leverage that information and look at it. Make sure you treat your collaborators like virtual team members. This creates a lot of motivation that makes them feel part of the project. And at the end of the day, we'll keep the momentum going. So from a Microsoft perspective, does InnoSource move the needle? And the answer is yes. We have seen greater engineering satisfaction among teams that practice in a source. We have seen knowledge transfer and new features in products because of in a source. And we have seen better product quality and responses because of in a source. And so from a Microsoft perspective, it's a clear yes, and we will continue to pursue in a source for better faster and more efficient engineering. Thank you very much.